right back. Take your time. I'm excited, by the way. Me too. So you're excited too? How you doing? I'm sorry. I want to show you something. Sir, please. You sent her that photograph. So Is that, did you send that to her? What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Grimm. Today we have another classic TCAP reaction for you, and this one is quite insane because we have seen some pretty extreme reactions on this show so far, but this guy might take the cake as having the biggest eruption of emotions as soon as he realizes that he's about to talk to Chris Hansen. I don't want to spoil too much for you, but this dude absolutely loses his mind and immediately freaks out, so make sure you watch until the very end with me because this one is quite spicy, if I do say so myself. Without any further ado, let's just get right on into it, shall we? Sitting in the car in the front. It's busy at our undercover house in Long Beach, California. Okay, he's getting out of the car. Just stay tight and we'll go to the front door. So if you're wondering why we're starting off with the cops kind of communicating here, it's because they have actually just recently wrapped up with another person that got caught up in this sting and they were still trying to process that dude. He was still at the back of the house at the time of recording and this second creep here, the one we're focusing on today, pulls up. So they have to make some quick thinking here and pretty much swap these guys out. So that's why it's kind of tense right now. And again, it really freaks me out that they can just have these guys coming through on almost a like half an hour appointment basis. Like that's just how many creeps they're able to fish out with these decoys online and it absolutely disgusts me to think about that remember we asked our previous suspect to go out the back way so it wouldn't scare off our next visitor hi how are you doing come on in He's Paul Clemente, a 22-year-old college Sorry, student from San Diego. And the best part is Paul Clemente here walks right past the other creep's car that just got caught up in this sting, not even realizing that he's about to meet the same demise that that other guy just met. Ugh, this is just poetic justice at its finest right here, and I cannot wait to see this sting happen. Let's get it. Finally, he gets down to business. So when's the time I could come to your house? Of course, when your mom is not around. I'm asking when, so we can go out. So as you all know, I'm really not able to show any of the type of chat logs here on the channel that will hopefully be changing soon with the new year. Make sure you stay tuned for that. I'm gonna have some big news for you guys, especially you fans of the To Catch a Predator series that I'm doing here. But needless to say, this guy gets right down to business and he is very, very clear in what he is coming over there to do and what he is interested in partaking in with his decoy. Again, without realizing that this is a sting and that everything he says is being recorded. And that's really gonna bite him back in the butt here right now because he's about to be faced with all of his actions and not be able to handle it in the slightest and he literally like flat out just says when are your parents not home so i can come over and we can hang out i need to make sure that there are no adults in the household while we hang out like it almost sounds like he's just perfectly writing the script for himself to go to jail like it just it just works out too perfectly this guy is an absolute idiot you're gonna be my first that's right he may think she's but he's the one who says he's a now, the 22-year-old is in the house. <laughs> All right. Um, the word I had to omit there sounds like a state, you know, Virginia. Um, but yeah, this dude admits that he has never really had that experience before. And I love that he just now has the moniker of the 22-year-old Virginia resident, if you get my drift. As if he couldn't be further humiliated on the show, now everyone that watches realizes he's a creep that also has never gotten any in his life. So he's a creep and a loser. Well, not really. You can just be abstinent and not be a loser. But I'm sure this one is involuntary. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Yeah, I'm just gonna go get my hair ready. I'll be right back. Take your time. I'm excited, by the way. Me too. So you excited too? How you doing? I'm sorry. Woo I love these freaking transitions where Chris picks up on something they say and he's just so quick-witted when he pops in. He's like, oh, you're excited too? I'm pretty excited. Why don't you have a seat over here? And why don't I, uh, you know, just end the rest of your life as it stands today and turn you into the creep that you are. Go ahead, just take a seat for me. And of course, they always listen, but I'm, I'm just immediately realizing that this dude probably knows what's up based off of how quick of a reaction that was. Like, no matter what, they're always scared, thinking that Chris might be the parent of the child or something. But no, I think this guy knows exactly what's up. Up and he's a fan of the show. What's wrong? I'm sorry. Please have a seat. I'm sorry. What were you doing here? She said so excited to see me. She said she was excited to see you. Yeah. Yeah. They always have this really, really weird excuse. I don't know if it's because they're in shock and they can't quite formulate a good way to talk themselves out of this situation, which there really is no good way. But they always say, she was so excited to see me, dude. She was begging for me to come over. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that, dude? Like, uh, no, you still made the decision to drive across town or sometimes, in many cases, drive across many towns to meet this person. You knew exactly 
exactly what you were getting yourself into. And it doesn't matter how, you know, excited the other party was, you're still committing a very terrible act by coming over here. So you can apologize all you want and you can cover your face all you want, but we already got a good look and we know that you're a creep, dude. It's over for you. As we're having our conversation inside, outside, the Long Beach police decide this is a good time to sneak into the backyard and arrest our earlier visitor. So amidst this chaos, they're literally evacuating the guy that just got caught, I don't know, like 20 minutes before this dude. This is a very quick operation here. I mean, my entire perception of the show before I started watching it was way off. I thought that they would have to, you know, investigate and try for weeks to catch someone. But the fact that they have multiple people a day, like I said in the intro, is just absolutely disgusting and freaks me out to think that there are so many weirdos like that in this world. I didn't say anything bad, sir. You didn't say anything bad. I want to show you something. Sir, please. You sent her that photograph. Sir, is that, did you send that to her? Yes, sir. Just, I didn't do anything bad, he cries, as Chris literally pulls out the chat logs and pulls out a picture that he sent to the decoy. I'm sure you can imagine exactly what was in that picture. But yeah, you cannot say that and then still think that you have not done anything bad when you are immediately shown the exact bad thing that you did and the bad things you've been doing or been saying to this person that you thought was, you know, an entirely different person than they turned out to be. He's really committing to this whole shirt up thing, though. Like, he just thinks that if he can't see Chris, Chris can't see him him and he just doesn't exist anymore but sadly my dude it does not work out that way <laughs> why did you sir, think that that was an okay thing to do sir she said it's okay she said it's okay so because it girl says it's okay you do it sir please dude she said it's okay everyone knows that immediately changes every law like as long as the other person is chill it means that laws don't exist right that's how it works oh it's not still dude please she said she really wanted me to come over <laughs> Like, his ridiculous excuses just get worse and worse as time goes on. And I love seeing their brains just unravel here, as they really don't know what to say. I mean, what do you do in this situation? Thankfully, I'm never going to be put in this situation. Neither will any of you. But it's amazing to think of the absolute explosion that's going on in his head of thoughts and, like, ways to get out of this or ways to talk yourself out of this. And instead, the only thing you can muster up is, she told me to come over. She was excited. Have you ever had conversations like this with on the internet before? No, this is my first time. Your first time. Yes. You know, I hear that a lot. Can you imagine why I'm a little skeptical on that? Hearing that a lot is an understatement. I mean, if we did a predator bingo, that would be the center square because it's just a given that everybody that's caught in the show says that it was their first time. And I really don't think I've ever believed a single one of them. If it is, they have astronomically bad luck and this sting operation did its job by catching someone before they could actually act on this, you know, with a person that's not a decoy. But I'm willing to guess that this dude's at least chatted with many other people like this in the past. He might not have met up with them and this might truly just be some bad luck for him, but I am just gonna go out on a limb and say it's pretty much virtually impossible that he has never spoken to someone else on the internet in this capacity. Once a creep, always a creep. Can you imagine why I'm a little skeptical on that? Sir, please. Well, virtually everybody who walks in this house says the same thing. Oh, I'm sorry. And I'm guessing that not everybody's telling the truth. Sir, I'm sorry, sir. And look, dude, repeat apologies are not going to help you here. I know you don't have anything else to say, but clearly the sorry doesn't count when you're sitting in this house and you would have done something had Chris Hansen not been here. Your apologies mean Jack right now. And as we suspected, when Clemente first covered his face, he knows there are cameras in the house. Do you ever watch television? Yes, I know, sir. See, that's why he instantly put the shirt over his head. He knew that he was on this show. Most guys are kind of on the fence and they're thinking, is this guy a cop? Is he the parent of the person? Am I about to be beat up? No, this guy saw Chris's iconic face and instantly knew that he was about to star on one of the biggest shows at the time, Dateline. That just has to be a terrible feeling in your gut. But I really don't feel bad for the guy because, again, remember, he's a creep. I've said that about a thousand times this video, but we don't have to have any remorse for these guys. They went out and did this on their own, and if anything, it's the best option option for society that they're caught like this and exposed. So I'm not a pretty predator, sir, but I'm just... You're not a real predator. No, sir. Just I'm a just... pretend predator. No, I'm just curious, sir. A curious predator. <laughs> he just thinks he can say things and then anyone will believe him. Like, dude, you literally are proving that you are a predator by being in this house right now. And you saying that you aren't isn't changing a thing. Like, he, he is really in La La Land with this. And I love that Chris just keeps pressing him and he's like, oh, you're not? You're pretend? Oh, no, you're just curious. Like, I'm trying to give you an out here. There really is no out, but I'm just trying to understand what you're saying. And it's all getting jumbled up because you're so stupid you can't formulate a single thought to cover your ass right now. Then you probably know that I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC and, yes. and you know the story we're doing. Yes, sir. So, is there anything else you'd like to tell us? 
We'd like to hear it. If not, you can walk out the door you came in. <laughs> and then the boom arms and the other cameras come out. Again, I just got to give props to this crew. I know they have to be instructed to be as intrusive as possible with these cameras to really drive home the fact that they are being filmed. And that part of this show is just what makes it like addicting to me. I love that feeling of when the final reveal happens. And even though this guy knew of the show, it still is special because no one has really tried to cover their identity this entire time like this dude and committed to this. Even though he realizes they already got his face on camera and his username and all that stuff, it's over for him but he still thinks he can just cover his face and walk out and now for the second best part when they actually get taken away by the people that are helping with the sting here the local police force he has to know that's coming so let's get right on into it i'm sorry and since he knows about our investigations he probably knows what to expect when he steps outside put your hands up i'm not a criminal sir put your fingers <laughs> he tries the same strat with the cops. Dude, there is no freaking way. They literally have tasers to him and they're like, dude, put your hands up. Put your hands behind your back. And he's like, I'm not a criminal. Like thinking that again, he can just say things and people will believe it. This is not how the world works, man. We have the evidence. You literally were just in the house talking to Chris Hansen. Just get on your knees and comply at this point and get taken away for questioning because you are not helping yourself by talking and trying to just tell everyone that you're not exactly what you just got caught doing if that makes sense so then he gets taken away and processed unfortunately we don't have that footage but we do know that he had to register for an entire lifetime as the creep that he is so that everybody in society knows what's up with this guy and knows that he cannot be trusted and that's a great ending if you ask me let me know what you thought of this episode down in the comments below quite a special one because of his reaction and the fact that he knew the show i do kind of like these ones where they have the knowledge of the show beforehand it adds an extra little special twist to me but as always if you made it to the very end thank you so much for watching make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and leave a like if you enjoyed this video as well as comment what you enjoyed about it as always i'll see you guys in the next one and until then peace out